Hello, welcome back to Rygenix. Today we are going to discuss one of the creational design pattern, Simple Factory. I believe before learning any design pattern, you should have clear understanding about interface and polymorphism. If you would like to refresh on these topics, then please watch my video on these first before watching any design pattern videos. Especially the video on interface based polymorphism. The links are available in the description. All factory design patterns does the same thing. It takes care of object creation. But the difference is they differ on how they do it. Since they deal with creation of object, they all fall under creational design pattern. Consider subscribing the channel and hit the bell icon to see all the upcoming excited design pattern videos. So let's see what is simple factory. As per the definition, it has been defined as creates objects for us without exposing the instantiation logic to the client. Now in general terms, factory is something when given some input material creates something for us. For instance, if paper is an input, then perhaps factory can create paper boxes for us. And most importantly, the one who gives the input does not need to know how factory creates the boxes. He just knows in order to get the boxes, he just need to provide paper. In fact, that is really good for him, right? Because otherwise he would have been loaded with lots of other responsibilities. Similarly, when it comes to simple factory design pattern, factory creates the object for us without exposing the instantiation logic to the client. The client is not aware of how the classes are getting instantiated. Basically, the factory takes care of it. So in simple factory design pattern, we have a factory class which has a method that returns different types of object based on given input. This is by far one of the most commonly used design patterns, could be because it is very easy to understand and implement. People often get confused between simple factory and factory method. If you have the same confusion, then please do watch my video on factory method. It has been clearly explained there. You can find the link in the description. Let's look at the UML diagram before flipping over to Visual Studio. Here we see that we have a product. This could be an interface which is implemented by concrete product. Since this could be an interface, we can definitely have more than one concrete product. Now who creates the product? Client creates it. How it creates? It creates via concrete factory. If we change this diagram to the example that we are going to implement, then this would look something like this. As mentioned, we can of course have multiple products implementing iMobile. So client requests a specific product, say Samsung, iPhone or Xiaomi via mobile factory with a specific parameter. Factory creates the product and returns back to the client. So what problem does simple factory tries to solve? For that matter, any factory. The problem is that without this pattern, there could be a lot of new keyword everywhere in the application. That may lead to significant duplication of code and it makes your code very tightly coupled. Also, if you have new keyword all around, then definitely it impacts the application's extensibility. Without this, in certain scenario, your code might not be polymorphic. Let's flip to Visual Studio and quickly look into how we can implement this. Let's create a console application. Let's name it Creational Design Pattern. Let's create a class library called Simple Factory. As per the UML diagram of the pattern, we have a product, concrete product and a concrete factory. So first, let's create those folders. Now let's create the respective interfaces and classes. Now what is product? Product is nothing but our interface, right? Let's create our interface iMobile with the method getMobile. Let's create two concrete product that implements iMobile. Let's say Samsung and Xiaomi.
Now, as discussed earlier, who creates these products? Our concrete factory, right? Now, do you remember concrete factory creates the product based on a specific parameter passed by client? Now, let's say client passes the parameter using an enum. So, let's create the enum first. Brand type. So, brand could be Samsung or Xiaomi. We can have more brands as well. Now, let's create the factory. So here we have a mobile factory class which has a method called create mobile. So this method just knows that it has to create a mobile based on the received parameters brand type. We have a simple switch case and depending on the brand type it creates the brand and returns to the client. So our simple factory implementation is done. Let's build this assembly. Let's add this assembly reference to our client. Now let's say client wants to create a product Samsung. Let's run this. We get the expected product. Samsung Mobile created. Let's create a Xiaomi product. Again, we get the expected product. Xiaomi Mobile is created. That's it. Our simple factory implementation is done. I hope you understood the concept of simple factory. Would really appreciate if you can comment and let me know. Before wrapping this up, Let's quickly list down the advantages of Simple Factory. Factory helps to keep all object creation in one place and avoid spreading new keyword across code base. Hence, it encapsulates object creation. Now you can see here, without this factory, the object would have been created in the client code. With the factory, the object creation processes are taken away from the client to the factory and thereby decoupling the client code with the object creation. This in turn will help enhance the reusability as well. The factory pattern also helps in the scalability of the application as the client code only refers to the interface and we can add more products implementing the interface without making any changes to the client code. It gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to time to change the application. That is, you can basically create new implementations without changing the dependent code. Also, since you use interface, your code becomes more testable as interface really helps in mocking your object. Another advantage is code becomes more maintainable as the object creation is centralized. And last but not the least, code adheres to solid principle. Hence your code by default follows the good practices of object oriented design. That's all for today. I hope you guys found the video helpful. If it did, then please hit the like and subscribe button and share this video with others to see more such contents. Thanks.